بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين This is the last khutbah of 2020 if you see the calendar because next Friday is January 1st, 2021. Um, and this was actually a difficult year, the entire year, because so many loved ones passed away. So many of the community members died in this year. Every single Friday, I had a request that someone is struggling from COVID or someone passed away from COVID. All these requests which I had, whether of a death of Brother Majid or of Brother Nihal, is, uh, sickness they are because of covid so this year was extremely difficult in terms of health crisis and globally speaking this year was difficult and not only because of the health crisis this year was difficult but even pandemic have destroyed the global economy so many brothers and sisters have lost their job as an imam brothers and sisters were going to text me that imam can you make dua for me i'm jobless now or there's a loss in the business so there is a global health crisis, then there's a global financial crisis, then there's a global recession. And, and then marriages are being destroyed, domestic violence is going up, husband and wife, you would never expect with that husband and wife. And subhanAllah, things are happening because of the constant lockdown, constant friction, constant, constant stress. They were never supposed to spend so much time uh, together, but because of the lockdown, they are forced to, and now eventually they are exposed. So, as we are concluding this difficult year, I want to share the year which was extremely difficult in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is called as Aamul Huzn, Year of Sorrow. And it was so difficult that it was regarded as Aamul Huzn, Year of Sorrow, if you read the seerah. Most of us remember Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a great leader. Most of us would remember Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a person who had a great smile on his face most of the time, who told us the purpose of our life. But he himself faced so many difficulties, so many calamities, so many trials. And within those difficulties, this one year in his life, which is 10th year of his, of his prophethood, was so difficult in terms of the calamities he received that it was regarded as the year of sorrow in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I just want to share a few things from that year and then the lessons which we can learn and apply as we are concluding 2020. The first calamity which Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam faced in this year of sorrow, again, 10th year in his prophethood, was that his beloved uncle Abu Talib, who provided him political support, who raised him from his childhood, who took care of him like his own son and who actually protected Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from political standpoint from the Quraysh leaders he fell sick and he passed away in this year so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost his political support with his death then next as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was filling the void as Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was calming himself down Siratul Halbiya says that after three days or after a month, both the narrations are there. Just after three days or after a month, next news comes where his beloved wife Khadija, who fell sick and then she passed away. And if you don't know, Khadija was the one first woman who believed on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the she was the one who supported Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when others rejected Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she passed away. So basically both the external support of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and internal support of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they both went. Now Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is left alone in terms of the support. And Subhanallah, we can talk about their story forever in multiple khutbas. But one thing I want to share with between Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Khadija that he loved her so much, his wife. He loved Khadija so much that when Khadija passed away, he himself buried her in her grave and then 
the historians like Ibn Hisham mentioned that he didn't smile for a few days because of the sadness, because of the sorrow he went through. And he loved her so much that even days after her death, he moved to Medina, he got married to Aisha, and he used to say that Khadija was a great woman because she supported me when no one supported me. She stood with me when no one stood with me. She was a great woman. Actually, it was a beautiful story that Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu read. She said, Ma ghirtu ala imra'atin lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma ghirtu ala Khadija. That I never, Aisha, as a wife of Rasulullah, is saying, I never became jealous with anyone as much as I actually became jealous with Khadija. Because, um, because, uh, that Rasulullah was married to her before and she passed away and then she married to us. And the things which Rasulullah would mention about Khadija, the nice things, the compliments, it was overwhelming. Whenever he would slaughter an animal after her death, he would distribute it to the relatives of Khadija and friends of Khadija. As, as a nice gesture, subhanAllah. By the way, both these individuals, Khadija and Abu Talib, passed away back to back in this year, 10th year of Prophethood. So external, internal support of Prophet Muhammad was gone. And this year was so difficult that it was regarded as year of sorrow, amul huzn. And then after this, after this, the Quraysh and the leaders of Mecca, they got license to do whatever they want. So they increase their abusive behavior towards Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi because now when he will go out to pray, now though no one is there to protect him. Previously there was Abu Talib. So there were reports that when he was praying after this incident and he was doing sajda, that leaders of the Quraysh would throw filth on him. You're talking about Islamophobia in America? Compare this to Islamophobia in Mecca, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praying and people are throwing filth on him. And then he would go back and his daughters would clean that. And then his daughters would cry that why it is happening to our father but just because he's praying. And then he would say, That don't worry, Allah will protect us, my beloved daughter. Allah will be with us. Then financially, they boycotted Rasulullah Sallallahu They made a plan to kill Rasulullah Sallallahu even after this. So this year was extremely, extremely difficult for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So much so that it was regarded as year of sorrow. It was so difficult that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala had to reveal Surah Yusuf in this year, mentioning the sorrow of Yaqub Alayhi Salam because he got separated from his son Yusuf so that he can, Allah can calm Prophet Muhammad down for his pain, for his separation with his wife and with his uncle. SubhanAllah. It was so serious. But after this, we all know what happened. These bad days passed. He remained patient. He did not wear a t-shirt. That 10th year of prophethood sucks. He did not do that. He, he remained patient. He remained steadfast. And then good days came. And then we all know with the legacy of Prophet Muhammad that after 1400 years, we are mentioning his name in Worcester, Massachusetts, SubhanAllah. But no one remember his struggle, SubhanAllah. Why I'm telling you this? It's not just for the sake of a storytelling. He didn't say this year sucks. He didn't say this year was insane. We know this year was difficult in his life. He remained steadfast. Similarly, my brothers and sisters, I won't say from the analogy standpoint, from the Qiyas standpoint, that we are facing the same pain as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu faced in 10th year, as in year of sorrow, because our pain and his pain, there's a huge, it's uncomparable. But yet I would say that this year was difficult for us, SubhanAllah. So many community members, beloved family members passed away. So many people lost their jobs, as I said. So many people have the issues in, in their families now. and. We should ask ourselves, how are we reacting to this year? Are we being patient like Rasulullah Sallallahu in the year of sorrow? Or are we reacting in an inappropriate way? Because remember, first reaction matters. How we are reacting. And if you are thinking, why me? 
so many people got COVID, but why my father passed away? Why my brother or my mother passed away? So many people are affected by the COVID, but so many people are having job. Jeff Bezos of Amazon is earning so much. Why my business went down? Why me? If that question is bothering you, then remember this hadith. Many times you will think and this will drive you crazy. Why it's happening to me? So many people are impacted with COVID, but why only me? Maybe Allah is upset with me. This shaitan will actually whisper in your ears that maybe Allah is upset with you. No. Maybe you will think maybe Allah is not happy with me. Maybe Allah doesn't love me. No. Maybe this is happening because I'm not a practicing Muslim. No. Maybe there is an evil eye or hasad. That's why I'm getting divorced in these days. No. If you want to know what's happening to you, there is one hadith. And that hadith, Rasulullah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Allah Ta'ala is a ahabba abdan ibtalahu. That when Allah loves someone, He will test him. He will test her. He will put him under difficulty. He will put her under difficulty. It's a sign. These, these tests are the sign of Allah's love. See the life of prophets. The year of sorrow came in the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Was Allah upset with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Was he not practicing Muslim? None of these arguments will matter. This is a test of Allah. Good days will come. These are one of those difficult days. Our life is like a roller coaster. One day up, other day down. When you are down by the difficulties, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift you up. That's it. But don't fall. Don't fall. Just try to strive hard and inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to raise you up inshallah ta'ala. Just the final thing before I can end, inshallah. Can we say this year was insane? I have seen subhanallah t-shirts saying 2020 year sucks. Can we do that? See, this year was difficult. No argument. Rasulullah regarded a year in his life was difficult. That's fine. But can we curse 2020 or a year, a month, a day, a moment in our life? I see a face mask also, <laughs> 2020 sucks and you are wearing face masks. So first of all, remember this, Rasulullah says in Sahih Muslim, لا تصبوا الدهر فإن الله هو الدهر That never curse time because Allah is time. What does it mean? It means that this is just the metaphor. Arabs back in the days, whenever any difficulty would come, they would curse time. Whenever loss of life, that loss in business, loss of job, any bad thing will happen, they will curse time. And Rasulullah wanted Muslims to be open minded. He said, don't curse time for Allah is time. It means Allah is causing those difficulties in that time. So if you are cursing 2020, it means indirectly you are cursing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who planned that this will going to happen in this way. Just trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't do that. Because at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the planner. Time in and itself doesn't have anything to do. And if we believe time is doing anything, that this is actually contradictory, conflicting to our belief. We believe that Allah is the one who controls everything. What time have? Nothing. It's just the number. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom, inshallah ta'ala. Please make dua for the entire ummah. Allahumma ansuril islam wal muslimin. Allahumma gzul man khazal al-deen Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alna zhanban illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la daynan illa qadayta. Wa la hajatan min hawaij dunya wal akhara illa qadaytaha ya arham al-rahimin. Wa la maridan illa shafayta. Wa la maytan illa rahimta. ولا الضالا إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين الله